Welcome to our talk today, The Hitchhiker's Guide to a Great Developer Career. My name is Helen Scott, I'm a developer advocate over at JetBrains, and I'm joined today by... My name is Sven, and I'm a developer advocate at Atlassia. So, before we start with just like showing you great developer careers and great careers in general, we want to start with the elephant in, in the room, right, about career move. Who has done here in the audience some great career moves during their careers? Couple of hands. Nice. All right. Elephant in the room. Who has done some bad career moves during their careers? <laughs> All right. Also, a couple of you. Yeah, great. Yeah, same, same actually with me. So, um, so let's start a little bit like looking at bad career moves um, with some more celebrities, right? Um, you probably know this guy, right? Nicholas Cage, one of my heroes, actually, he in the in 90s. The, the Rock, right? The Rock, great Con film. Air, great yeah. movies, super movies. I love Nicholas Cage movies. I was actually, when, when Nicholas Cage was showing in the cinema, I knew, right, I, I'm, I'm going to watch the yeah. Nicholas Cage movie, yeah. right? Um, but what happened with Nicolas Cage, actually? I don't know. Now, if I see movies with, with Nicolas Cage, I said, mm. I would, I would avoid that. I'm probably not the best movie, but um, that's me. Um, well, so also big, big, uh, actually, legends, Guns N' Roses, right? So I did the research for this talk and looked at some bad career moves. Um, why did Guns N' Roses show up? Does anyone know why the band's called Guns N' Roses here? Hands up. Okay, oh, one, one, two. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, I didn't know, and I was a big fan. So Roses comes from... Axel Rose, right? Axel Rose, roses. But what the hell does guns mean, right? Guns and roses. It's Tracy Guns. So Tracy Guns and Axel Rose founded Guns and Roses. Does anyone know Tracy Guns? I didn't know Tracy Guns. Um, but just before Guns and Roses had their breakthrough, Tracy Guns left the band and got replaced, actually, then they needed to look for someone else. Um, and that was Slash, uh, and that the rest is legendary, right? Biggest rock band of the world, Guns N' Roses, really, really great. Um, but Tracy Guns, bad career moves. I don't know what, what happened, actually, behind the scenes. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, from my, from my point of view, not a good, not the best career move. Um, talking about career moves, right? Ronaldo! Yeah, that went well. Ronaldo. <laughs> Brilliant. So you've taken us through some, um, some, some questionable career moves, arguably. But what about your career, right? You have a start, you have a middle, you have an end, where you kind of skid into retirement and go, that was fun, not doing it again. Um, and we take various turns alongside our careers. And we have different motivators. We all have different motivators, right? Might be money might be technology, might be you want to work for a specific company, maybe you want to go to a different country and work there for a bit. But no matter what your motivators are or the turns that you take in your career, one thing is for certain. It's not. It's not. I tried. It's, it's not a strategy, and it's not a good strategy anyway. <laughs> but worry not. Careers can be scenic, they can be beautiful, they can be really hard. They can at times be, be kind of fun. And it's a journey, and you're always going on that journey. But we, I mean, even between ourselves, right, we've had a few job titles. Mm -hmm. we, we were talking about this the other day. I mean, developer advocate, right, we covered that one at the start. Um, technical writer, VP of product marketing, um, yeah, yeah. product owner, all sorts of careers. And, you know, you, you, do, you don't need to stay in one place. But we're not here to talk about our careers. We're here today to talk about great developer careers. Tell us about some great developer careers, then. Yeah, so the first one, I don't know if you know Judith. Uh, Judith Estrin, um, she actually was kind of in the group of inventing the TCP IP protocol back in the 70s. Um, and really, down to the bit level, was working on, on, on the communication side of, 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 of networks. Um, and then she founded a couple of companies pretty successful, and her last company that she founded actually got acquired by Cisco at the end. And then she eventually became the CTO of Cisco. Um, so down from really working down to the bit level things of shifting, shifting bits and bytes around to leading thousands of engineers. What a great, great developer career. The next one you might know, like Linus Torvald, right? Linus 
inventor of, of, of Linux, um, just like still the main contributor or sits still on the Linux kernel and uh, decides what goes in, what goes out. Very, very, uh, uh, very, very technical, still programming. So also a great developer co career, but um, actually his people skills, right? He never managed anyone. So for any, everyone that, well, anyone that is on the Linux mailing list, you probably know why this is, right? It's just a little bit for the better that he doesn't manage anyone. He actually admitted it uh, and took took step back from the Linux mailing list for, for a few years, just like to work on his people skills to enhance his his developer career, because this is also part of the career to work on your on your people skills. Um, but great developer careers. So, but. Then we now looked at some great developer careers. Let's start with just like uh, our, our careers, right? We come from the universities. We start as junior developers. So we are these junior developers. Of course, yeah, we have to learn a lot of stuff, come in the job, everything is new, learn how to program, how things work, how things work in a corporate environment, <laughs> right? Coming from the university, that's, that's pretty challenging. But once we are just like get settled and just like feel comfortable, we just look at what is the next move that we can make. So we look at around us and then we see the senior developer, right? Um, I said, oh, I want to be a senior developer. These people are just like, they just like make the whole technical decisions. People go to them, get advices. So I just like want to become those senior developers. So you work towards that, just like becoming a senior developer. And once you just like get promoted, eventually you just like become that, that, that senior developer. And then you just like see, okay, just like I'm, I'm now that person that makes all the technical decisions great. What is the next move in my career? Right? And in a lot of companies, this looks like, like, like this, right? Um, like being an engineering manager, right? Just like get promoted to be an engineering manager and then eventually uh, move on to just like being a director of, of engineering uh, or the VP of engineering or CTO or whatever is the highest level in your company. So this is just like a natural move that you want to take, right? Um, and why do we actually promote our senior developers to being engineering managers? There are some good reasons why we do that, right? These people are technical advisors. So they advise people on a technical level. Great manager skill, actually. If you just like have a manager that advises on a technical level, great. They mentor people. So they bring other people, junior developers, forward. So they, they help with mentoring um, and mentor people. Um, people actually follow their leadership. So they are just like natural leaders and people follow their leadership. Also great. And then they just don't, don't, don't uh, lead by demand. Um, they lead by example, which is also a cool, great manager skill to have. Um, and then also they are domain experts. They know the domain. They know the tech. They have the technical knowledge. So great. They make probably great decisions as engineering managers. So we promote them as engineering managers. We promote our good programmers to be managers. And not only that, right? We also promote our bad programmers to just like get out of programming <laughs> and just like be engineering managers. We do also do that. Well, don't get me wrong, this could be a good thing, right? Not that we just like get rid of bad programmers in our team, but also bad programmers can be great managers. Because managing and coding or, or doing technical stuff, being engineers, are two different things, actually, right? There is some overlap, and I just like to, uh, told you that, but there, there are actually two different things. They actually need to grow the team. So they of, all of a sudden make the decisions that's like, should we invest in a back-end developer or should we just like invest in a front-end developer or more in a pro product manager? So they make the decision of, of growing the team into the right direction. Then they start and motivate the team. They need to just like, also if the team is just like working heavily on staff and uh, deep down, they need to motivate them to, to, to get through it. Um, and they lead the team. They just like set the vision of the team. So also all of this is, is not really what 
we do as engineers. This is what we do as, as managers. And this is the hardest, hardest thing I learned when I became a manager, resolving conflicts. This is really hard, and this doesn't, no one teaches you that at university, how to resolve conflicts. And this is, this is, uh, is, is, is a manager skill, right? Um, so programmers and managers are two different things. So I see it not just like as a straight line, because a lot of companies are actually now having something else. I see it more like as a branching thing. You branch your career, um, and then become, go to the manager path. But what do you do if you're stuck as senior developer? Well, a lot of companies are actually having this new individual contributor track, um, like staff engineer, principal engineer, or distinguished engineers, right? You probably heard of those, right? And people are actually looking, looking for, for these uh, kind of engineers. But it's, there's no really definition of what is a staff engineer, what is a principal engineer, what is a distinguished engineer. There's no really like, this is how it goes. Like from junior to senior, there may be, might be some more definition, and you, but the lines get blurry and people are using these terms in different ways. So I've been looking at, uh, I've been talking to a lot of people, to staff engineers, to principal engineers, to find out like what is actually the difference between those job titles. And I found some, some com commonalities in, in there. Um, so let's start with the staff engineer. So the staff engineer is still focused around the code, the technical side of things. So all of these engineers are, of course, focused around the technical side of things, but these are still to the code level. So staff engineers normally don't work for one team, in a lot of companies, they work for actually more teams, so they work across teams to help with hard technical decisions, improving the developer process, so we have a, 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 the same developer process uh, across different teams. They uh, actually help also to align the goals, so we don't run into just different, different directions, um, but still down, very down to the, to the code level. So let's take a look at what is the principal engineer doing. So the principal engineer is a little bit like a little bit like going a little bit more away from the code side of thing and caring more about the product side of things. So but still on the technical side because the product managers might evolve the product into a direction that needs some also change in the technical direction. So they need, they need to work hand in hand about just like the vision for the next one, two, three years. And if I say scale and performance, it's not about the next feature, it's about the, the next step of the software that they discuss and that they actually bring back into the, into the technical teams and say just like, okay, we need to just like rethink our architecture because we're moving with the product in a totally, totally different direction. Of course, they also help with really uh, deep technical problems, plan for improvements, and so on and so on. So, but what is a distinguished engineer doing? Um, so just also a distinguished engineer, this is something that Google says, for example, they have just like they distinguished engineer fit into a small room. So it's just like very rare, this role, and then very high level. So they speak actually to the leadership team and advise the leadership team on a technical side. So they are more at the business level of things, but still advise the technical side uh, of, of the decision. They solve the really complex problem. They often are a spokesperson for, for companies um, and just like go to conferences and speak there, and then they just like, uh, follow hot trends in, 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 in software development and just like bring that back uh, into it. So this is actually what the individual uh, contributor track uh, look like, right? Um, so managing branching, individual contributor track. So this is how careers look like. But we can actually do more than this, right? We can also leave. Planet programming. Yes, don't get me wrong. It's, it's scary, I know, to leave uh, pro programming. But your skills that you have as a programmer can be used in so many other areas of the business. Um, Want to see, right? There's a planet, yeah. space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the enterprise developer. Let's explore strange new worlds to seek out jobs and new opportunities, to boldly go where no developer has gone before. Are you ready? Take us on the journey, little enterprise journey, space journey. All right, let's try that. Um, so there's a whole developer's universe out there. You might start with 
going from planet programming, which is fine, you feel safe, but if we are, once you explore new worlds, it can be a little bit like scary because you are just like going to another world, but still, uh, with a safety net. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. But how does that look like? What are, what are the strange new worlds? So this is so much out there, right? You can go to operations, product, teaching, research, promotion. Um, let's have a look at, let's, maybe you want to just like go into product a little bit more and take care of the product. Be a product manager, UX designer, or even a QA engineer to help people just like test, test their software better. Or you just like go into operations, right? Uh, being a platform engineer, site reliability engineer. Um, or you just go more, want to go more closer to the customer side. There's also some technical roles involved in the, um, being on the customer side, like technical account manager or being a technical recruiter, actually. Um, or like us, we are more on the promotion side of things, because, but, but this is not everything that developer advoca advocates does, but um, just uh, go and be a marketing, developer marketing manager, or even just like go into teaching, and Helen has been a technical writer before, so that, yep. that is also a career move. So what I wanted to say, like, there is so much stuff out there where, where we still required your knowledge and your skills that you have actually learned as a programmer, you can use in other jobs and accelerate accelerate especially there. So I've been uh, doing this uh, GitHub repository um, that uh, with, with all the roles that I just talked about, with all like descriptions, um, you can just like take a look at it, copy it, whatever you want. Um, and also if you find some, some assumptions that I made of uh, what the roles look like and you want to change it, just like send me a pull request, I'm open for pull requests. And it's not a complete list, it's just like what I found um, on uh, when we're talking to people where they move their careers on from being a developer, right? Um, but the question is now, what role is actually right for me there? What, it's when you just showed us all this, all these roles. What is the right one for me? How can you find out? So there are certain things that I, I know a lot of people are doing. So for example, people do job internships. I know someone who's just like saying two weeks a year, I'm just like trying some other jobs out. Just like for one week, I'm trying this job. To just first to get an insight into what this role is about, but maybe also to move into that direction. Um, other, other people call that maybe uh, job shadowing. So just like following someone, and just like see, just like attend the meetings to see like what is, what is, what's the day-to-day -day work look like. What we do at Atlassian is we have a job rotation program where we just like, it's a half-year program where we send developers on a journey to just like try out something else. So you do two months being a QA engineer, then two months a site reliability, engineer and then uh, going to product management and then eventually going back to developer and think like well I feel comfortable here I just like want to stay here or I want to move into, into product management afterwards so you can actually make the decision what you what you want to do um, so just like what you want to get away from is it's just career paths is not just like a straight line it mo looks more like this you try something out maybe you want to move back and you need to just like explore what's out there and what helped me a lot with doing that is that i actually blogged i be on twitter i go to conferences and speak and i meet a lot of people and talk to a lot of people to find out what could be my next career move Right? That, that also helps with enhancing your career. What would you call it that, does. Helen? I, I would call it a personal brand, actually. And oh. I think they're really, really helpful for your career. Um, it's something that I'm very passionate about, and I've been on a bit of a journey with, and I've made a lot of mistakes with. So I thought I'd come here and talk about it so you don't have to make the same mistakes. Um, so yeah, a personal brand. Um, we're going to take a look at why. Why even have one? Uh, what one looks like, because that's always helpful. And then how you can grow it. So arguably, the most important question, the first question that we need to ask ourselves is why? Why have a personal brand? Why invest that effort in doing that? And it's quite a simple answer because it just helps. Well, it's, just, it's not a simple answer. One answer is it helps you to stand out. It helps you to stand out when you are just one of many in a stack of CVs. Because that's how we have to represent ourselves when we job hunt, isn't it? We send CVs in to a very tired hiring manager, and we get these two sides of A4 to explain how amazing we are. And it's really difficult. So it can help to elevate if there's other places that people can look and find out who you are and what you're about. It's worse than that. A lot of us have the same skills. We've worked in the same industry. 
We've worked in the same technologies. We've even worked together. Um, so the, this, this stack of paper can look kind of similar. So really, for me, opportunities and career progression are the kind of the prime drivers for why you'd want to have a personal brand. It can really help you to stand out, right? shine a spotlight on yourself. This is what you are. This is what you do. This is how amazing you are. Now, if I said to you, what is a personal brand? I'm going to go out on a limb and say, it's a website. And a lot of you might say, it's a website, Helen. Go and create a website. And that's exactly what I did, and I was wrong. Um, what I've since learned is a personal brand is it's not a website, it's not a palette of colors, it's you. It's who you are, right? What are you most authentic about? It's about just pause, take a moment, right? What are you passionate about in this world? What do you care about? What, if you're feeling morbid, which maybe you are, the day's getting on, um, what do you want on your tombstone? That's your personal brand. That is what separates you from everybody else, right? Because we, we, have the, you know, we work in the same place and we have the same skills, but we, we frequently find ourselves with different drivers, different reasons for getting out of bed. And that's what your personal brand is. So if that's what it is, it's not the website, it's not the palette of colors, which I will come to, what does that look like in reality? So, got some thoughts for you. First one. Social media, right? Love it or hate it, I've got some news for you. It's 2022, privacy is dead, sorry. Um, if you like social media, great. If you, d Sven. What? Are you on social media? Yeah, I want to tweet, like. Right now, in the middle yeah, of the talk? Yeah, I want to tweet, like. You, you want to do it right now, right now. Okay, we're going to do this right now. Selfie, everybody. Hands up. Hands up. Yay! Yay! All right. I'm right. Love it or hate right it, now. social media. Don't you dare tweet that right now. Uh, <laughs> um, but there are some really simple things you can do with social media. First up, you can align your usernames. Again, if a hiring manager or somebody in the community wants to find you, they will. You might as well make it easy for them. Um, if you have a really common name like, I don't know, Helen Scott, thanks husband, put a bit of your middle name in there, Helen Joe Scott. Uh, Sven, are you actually tweeting that right now? Yeah, <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, it's important. Um, Sven, you're Sven Pet everywhere, right? I'm Sven Pet everywhere. Yeah, yeah. so you can, align your, you can align your usernames. You can align your brand. Now, again, I don't mean that palette of colors. I mean your brand. Who are you? What are you authentic about? What do you care about? What change do you want to be in the world? Okay, moving on from social media when you're quite finished with it, Sven. You, are you, I'm, go I'm you're, done. You're good there? Okay. Um, content. I could create a whole talk about this, and we don't have time. Lucky you. Um, content is a wonderful way to create, share, and consume knowledge. You can do blogs. You can do videos. It doesn't matter kind of what, you, what you're passionate about, what you want to care about. Um, remember, everybody in this room started with Hello World, right? Everybody here started with Hello World. So it doesn't matter how far along that journey you are. Because we, we're all learning, we're all starting somewhere, and we all have different points of view and different challenges and different environments and different drivers. So you can create blogs, you can create videos. You can even do TikTok. I think that's a thing these days, right? You, yeah. You, you can do TikTok. I mean, that's... You think I'm too old for TikTok or what? I, I, well, you think I'm too old for TikTok? I, I, I don't... Yes? Well, oh. let me show you. I've, I've, I've done a TikTok. You, do you, you want to see, see this TikTok video? Just like to convince you that I'm not too old for you TikTok. You want to see it? Yeah? Everybody's like, okay, ooh, let's, don't let's, want to see it. Let's, let's All right, I'm going to show you his TikTok video. <laughs> right, hands up if you thought that was good. <laughs> All right, sorry, Sven, away sorry. From Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Both clear answer, thank you very much. Yeah, good, okay. okay. No too more TikTok, old. I promise. Too old for TikTok. Um, <laughs> Finally, you can engage with communities, right? Look, look where you are. This is a wonderful place to engage with the communities. You can share your content. And you can, you, know, you can work on your personal brand when you're here. You can share content. You can consume talks. You can give talks. Um, you can be mentored. I'm going to come on to that as well. So examples of personal brands. Um, I've got three for you. First one, quite a few of you are going to know him. 
Um, I put this example up here because it's a really nice Twitter bio. It says, hey, I'm Tom Cools. He uses the same um, handle everywhere. What he's passionate about, what he's authentic about, he's teacher-focused, he's Java-focused, and where you can find out more. And if you don't already follow Tom, you should, because he's amazing. Um, second example I want to put up there um, from my good friend Isabel Costa, a GitHub README. This is a really low barrier to entry. We've probably all got GitHub profiles. You don't need a fancy website for a personal brand. You can just make a GitHub README. Super simple, super easy, super quick. Final example I want to show you, um, Sarisha Pratha. And I put this up there, one, because she writes excellent technical Java-focused blogs, but two, to bust the myth that you don't need to blog every week or create a video every week to be successful in content creation. Do it when you have the time and when you have something to share. I know, I know the, the algorithms will love you to do it regularly, but the community is not an algorithm, and they'll consume your content and learn from your content at any time. So you don't need to do it regularly. So now you've got your brand. How do you build it up? How do you grow it? How do you take it to the next level? And you were like, make a website. Um, <laughs> and yeah, you could do that. But there are, there are some other options that you could do. Um, podcasts is one of them. Um, if you're invited to speak on a podcast, I highly recommend you say yes. They're a great way to get your name out there and build your brand and also learn more about what you're most authentic about. Um, next one's a bit of a, bit of a heavy hitter. Uh, oh, no, it's not that one. Meetups, you can go to meetups like this one. So you could come to, I don't know, the, the uh, biggest uh, conference in the Netherlands. That's a cool way to build your brand and go and meet people. Uh, next one, you can write a book. This is the hard hitter. Um, is there anybody in the audience who's written a book? Uh, any hands up? No? OK, if I, uh, the lights are very bad. I can't quite see. Um, well, they're probably very good for you. They're very bad for me. Um, but yeah, writing a book, this really is some people's sweet spot. And I'm working on a couple at the moment. But some people, like you heard Ben Cat this morning, he can write a book in two weeks. He doesn't see his family, but he sits in a room and he writes a book in two weeks. So that might be something that you want to consider. Speak at conferences. Right? This is a great way, again, to build your personal brand and find out a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Um, one of the great things about speaking at conferences is the Q&A afterwards. People come up and say hi, and, and they'll ask questions, and they'll challenge, and you get to meet more people in the community. Those are just some examples. There's plenty more. And if you want, you can now go and create the fancy website. So why have a personal brand? It's about being authentic. It's about having a place that's yours and yours alone, that's not just that two-sheet uh, piece of paper, your CV. Who are they good for? They're good for you. They're good for you. They're good for hiring managers, but they're good for you, because you are so much more than just your job. We're all so much more than that. And they're also really helpful for looking back on your journey. Right? You, you know, I might look at this talk in two years' time and go, oh, that was really bad. But, you know, if I look at a talk I did two years ago, I'm like, okay, that, this one was much better than that one. So you can look at the journey that you've been on. You can see what you've learned. You can see how far you've come. And it's a super fast-moving industry. That's really, really important to be able to do that. Just look back across your journey. Yeah, um, because also uh, our industry is so fast, fast, fast moving that we need to constantly keep up with, with what's going on because um, the software, software industry, the software development is changing, right? Um, we need to admit that. So maybe there are better tools out there. Maybe there are new ways of working that we are not aware of. And there are ne next technologies that we need to just like know to make a decision. Is that something that we want to use uh, in production or just like try out with or what's going on with that technology? So we need to we need to constantly learn, right? This is something how you enhance your career, by constantly learning and knowing what's out there and knowing what is hot and what is not right now um, to do that. So, but you might say, Sven, when should I learn, right? I'm sprinting the whole time. I'm just like going fast pace. I'm just like have my burn down chart in front of me and we need to just like burn down the story points each week and yay, two story points more. Woo, we celebrate <laughs> that. Um, that's, that, that's cool. Um, but we need to also stop, right? We can't sprint all the time. 
It's just like not sustainable, right? There's maybe times where we need to just like go on full mode, but there needs to be time also where we need to train, right? It's like, 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 like sports people, right? They can't sprint all the time. Football players are not playing football all the time. They need to uh, games all the t take games all the time. They need to train too. So how do you how do you train actually? So you doing the right thing? Um, you take time off work, hopefully now. Um, someone who's on the laptop here, close that, um, and then <laughs> learn right and go to conferences. But what does what do normally uh, actually? Um, companies give us for, for learning. They give us books. So a lot of companies say you can order a book that you want, just like we put it in the bookshelf so people can take that. That's a great way to learn. Um, or they offer us training, just like a workshop, one week workshop going on and learn Spring Boot to just like going deeper into, into this technology. Um, yeah, we have done that for years. Uh, and yeah, that's more the classical approach. It works, maybe. But yeah, books, just like reading, doing work, who's doing that anyway? Uh, so you, you end up doing it at home. So how can you actually learn, right? I said it already. So conferences are a great thing. You're doing the right, the right stuff. Um, what I'm doing also is just like listening to podcasts and audiobooks when I commute to work or when I'm just like doing home office and uh, then when I work out, I'm listening to, to podcasts and audiobooks. Um, and I learn a lot, a lot from, from that. Just like to know what's out there, what technologies are trending, what are people talking about. Super, super good. Um, and then also just like if you use open source technology at work, why don't take the time and contribute back to open source? Just like talk to your boss about that. Um, if you use that, you should also take time to open source, to, to contribute to open source. And you learn a lot from other people's code, to read code from other people that are not maybe in your organization, you learn a lot from that. So I can just like recommend to, to do that, right? But that also means that you taking time off again, right? You reading the book during work time maybe because you just like have learning time, maybe take a 20% time of learning. This is all not, not, not working because the, the rest of the team is actually sprinting during that time. And you just like have just like a bad feeling about it if you sit there and just like read something, learn something, contribute to open source, and the rest of the team is just like burn down the chart, right? Uh, so how can we actually learn more as a team? So just like taking time off to learn as a team. So what I was doing when I was a team leader, I was actually organizing brown bags with the team. So just like share your learnings from what, 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 what people have learned, share that with the rest of the team. Just like brown bags doesn't take really a lot of work time, it just like requires you to just like bring some lunch back with you, just like someone does a presentation for 10 minutes, and afterwards you start the discussion. It's really, really valuable to, to do that. What we did at MongoDB was we were having a book club. So a book club is just like you read a book and then a chapter each week as a team. So everyone is reading the chapter and then you meet for 45 minutes, one hour each week, and you discuss the what, what you read in the chapter. And it's not just for reading and learning from the book, it's learning from the others because you all of a sudden see perspective from your coworkers um, and discuss that. That really helps to just like learn stuff. Um, and also what I did was just like, um, we wanted to just like learn new programming language like Rust, for example, right? We didn't use Rust in any production code. We didn't use it anywhere, but we wanted to just learn it to see like, is that something that we can use in production or that we can just like with our next project use? So we took one and a half uh, hours each week off to just like learn some, some, some new programming language. Um, and then if we just like had a feeling for us, we're just like, okay, let's try some try TypeScript. Maybe this is something for us. So just to just like constantly, constantly learn and take the team, uh, take time off as, as a team, right? So why do organizations should invest in that? They actually, you build better products because you know the new technologies, you know the new toolings, you bring that into your organization. At the end, you will have, the organization will have better products. But what's more important is you grow your talent. They just grow by learning. They just like learn new ways of working and bring that and improve the company this way. So you grow also the people in your organization. And then also you keep your talent because 
who, what companies are doing these cool learning things, right? You just like be different and just like keep your talent and it's a cool place to work. Maybe uh, people have to work still with some older technologies, but they are able to learn this newer stuff during work time. So this is really something to, to keep your talent. But what are actually your personal learning goals? Yeah, you grow too, right? As I already said that. You, you, grow, your, your, you grow, grow yourself by just like learning. And maybe you also want to learn some new technologies to just like look at your next job or just like in your next job discussion, right? A salary discussion to just like get, get more money. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? We all want to just like uh, earn, earn maybe more money. Um, and have, have a great job. So, um, so wh wh where should you invest, right? In which, <laughs> in which technology, where should, you, where should you put in your learning, right? So I did just like a little bit of research, like in the London area, average salary of .NET developers are 58K, Great British Pound, which is a great salary. Um, so maybe I learned some .NET. Uh, next time, and then I looked at uh, closure developers. What does closure? Who thinks like closure developers will earn less than .NET developers? One. Who thinks they will earn more? Most of you. Yeah, you're right. Right. I did just like the research, and obviously they earn more. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm going off and learn some closure <laughs> now. Well, then I looked actually at open positions, right, and see like, huh. Maybe not so good idea to just like go for the one open position that is out there in the London area for, for, for closure developers. But you can just like continue with the research and then find out that Rust developers are earning a little bit more than .NET developers and there are a decent amount of open positions. Maybe this is a thing, right? Where do you get all those data or just like what is trending? What are companies looking for? Um, there are some, some sites that you can go. Stack Overflow has the developer survey. JetBrains actually does the state of developer ecosystem each year and a company that I work for, Manfred, uh, does a developer career report. So you just like, can go there and look, what, what is trending? What are people using? What are people looking into? These, these are all things that you just like see like, okay, should I, should I invest my time in that? Is that something that brings me to my next, next career move or, or not, right? But at the end, you should always, always, always go with what you're passionate about, not just like looking at the numbers. That's not working, right? Look what you're passionate about and go for that. Because also the learning skills are great, yeah? And if you just like want to apply for a Rust developer uh, position out there, you need to know some Rust, basically. <laughs> but what people are actually looking at, I did this research uh, at, a, at a conference in Portugal, um, and these are the answers, like, if you interview people, what are you looking at? And then soft skills, uh, communication, good communication, right? And then there's a little bit of Java in there, Java experience, it was a Java conference. But teamwork, be a team player. This is the things that people are actually looking that's much more valuable when you hire a new colleague than just like, just the knowledge that you have. So how do you acquire all this, all the soft skills, right? Yeah, that's a question. It's it's a tough question. There are a lot of ways, but I'm going to touch on one of them today, um, very briefly, and that is mentoring. Uh, now, if this is this is going to be going very very quickly, because but there is another talk on mentoring on this straight after this. So if what I say resonates with you, then definitely check out the talk on mentoring after this one. So first question with mentoring: What even is it? Well, there's numerous. Uh, descriptions out there, but fundamentally, it's an informal, voluntary relationship between two people, the mentor, the mentee, the mentor teaches the mentee a thing. No money is involved, uh, at least not in my country, um, and you just you share knowledge, you share experience, you share advice, and it can really help you to progress your career. So that's what mentoring is. How about why? Why should we? Well, why, the why is clear. You know, you want to advance your career, right? You want to go the fish are back, by the way. Um, the little fish to the big fish, right? You want to, you want to kind of explore this a little bit further. But what kind of things can you be mentored in? You know, we've already mentioned around, about soft skills and you know whether they're there's something that you can be mentored in. And when you say mentoring, most people think about a technology or I'm going to be mentored in Java or I'm going to be mentored in Spring or something like that. But there's lots of other ones you can do. So side projects, uh, again, you don't need to be a great developer. You don't need to have a side project to be a great developer. There's a bit of a myth around that. But side projects can be really helpful to be mentored in. Next one, 
creating content, again, this is really, really helpful. It's one of my passions. We're not born great at writing brilliant blogs. We're not born great at you know, producing phenomenal videos. Apparently, Sven is born great at doing TikTok. But most of us, we're not born with these skills, right? We can be mentored in that. Open source, that's another thing you can be mentored in. I, myself, be men mentored by my now colleague, Marit, in open source. Right? You can do this every, well, you can do it any time of the year. There's Hacktober as well if you want to do that. So you can be mentored in open source and learn kind of how that, how that all works. Next one, um, a way of working. So this is something, if you've worked in multiple um, organizations by now, you probably realize that agile means different things everywhere. So you can be mentored in a way of working. It doesn't need to be agile. But don't dismiss that because it, it's you know, not mentor worthy. It absolutely is. Um, technology. This is what most people think about when they think about mentoring. You know, mentored in Java or Spring or whatever. Conference speaking, uh, my final one. One of the reasons I'm stood here today next to Sven is I'm fairly new at conference speaking. So I wanted some help, and I wanted to be mentored, and I wanted to go on that journey with somebody that I respected and looked up to and had the time to help me. I reached out to Sven, and he said yes, which is pretty cool for me. Um, you've learned something from this experience, right? Oh, yeah. You're my so. first uh, co-speaker that I have on stage, actually. You're never I doing it again, are you? <laughs> Um, but no, you, you can be mentored in this thing. So what do you need? You need to know what your goal is, and you need to know how much time you have. That's it. Those are the only two things that you need to know. And then you need to go searching. You can look in communities. You can look in communities like this. You can look at your workplace. You can go to your friends, your extended network. Just start looking. Word of warning, if you're going to reach out to somebody on the socials and you don't know them, don't just slide into their DMs and say, will you mentor me, please? doesn't normally go well. Um, explain who you are, why you're reaching out to them, what you want to learn, because you're asking somebody for their time. It's a big ask, so give them something to go on. Narrow it down. Talk to them. Tell them what you expect to learn from this relationship. Um, be ready and willing to answer their questions as well, because if you're going to go into this relationship, you both need to know where each other is and what you're both going to commit to the relationship. So that's it. You talk, you grow, you learn. And then the wondrous thing about this is it doesn't need to stop there. You can have as many mentors as you have time for. And some of us are time rich, some of us are time poor. And that will change as you go through your career. So it's totally up to you how much you want to, you want to go through for. So in the last 44 minutes, whew, Sven and I have taken you on a whirlwind tour of some, uh, some tips for your career, talking about the different types of careers that you can have, personal brand, mentoring, soft skills, learning. Before we leave you today, I am going to hand over to you, Sven, for one final, final throw. Over to Sven for... Oh, that's my favorite, favorite part of this, of this talk, right? It is... Not that one. Apologies. <laughs> Mythbusters! Yay. So we're gonna crack the myth about career stops, right? So what are stopping your career? And there's a myth out there, and we would just like want to shed a light on it and yeah. see, like, is that a myth or is that something that is real, right? So shall we start? Yes. What's first, up first? First myth out there: the lazy one, right? The one that just like stays in their job for just like years and years and don't progress actually, just like sit there, does the job uh, day in, day out. Don't just like look at their enhancing the wait, career. Wait, wait, stop, stop. Are you saying that if you stay in one place too long, that's bad? That's I, what I just said, yeah. No, I, I stayed in a job for nine years. I loved it. I had a good time. I had career progression. I had a great team. I loved my job. I, I loved everything about it. Why, why is that bad? Yeah. Have you, I, you, 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 you might be right, right? I also stayed in a job for a long time, seven years or eight years. There you go. Um, and I enjoyed it. And I just like actually progressed also inside. I, I changed, changed <laughs> during, during the job. Um, I was just like yeah. different, different uh, roles, different And, and life, life is always changing, right? Sometimes you want to stay somewhere, right? You're happy, yeah. you're fulfilled, you want to stay there. It just depends where you are on that life journey. So 
Yeah, yeah. I'm you're right, you're right. What okay. would we call this, this move? This is busted, it's honestly. It's busted, all, all right. right. Go on the next. On to the next, ah, the drifter. Um, so this is the person that just doesn't really, they just, they just let opportunities come and go, and they don't grab them, they just, you know, go on by. Um, they're just the sort of person that is like, oh, well, it'll happen when, when I'm ready. And they don't really kind of take control of the career and just assume that it's going to be fine yeah, all the time. I, I, I would also just like intervene a little bit because there are sometimes people that are not just like as, as vocal as other people, mm -hmm. just like saying, oh, I did this great project. I need just like a raise or promotion or whatever. People are just like saying, this is my work. And... Uh, it should speak for itself, it's not... That's a good point, actually. Yeah, I, I was certainly raised with the notion of good work will speak for itself. It doesn't. Um, so if you have that belief, please shed it. Um, good work doesn't speak for itself. You have to speak up and say what you're working on um, because you can't... Please don't assume that people know and that it's, you know, good work will be noticed because that's not necessarily the case. Yeah. So yeah, this I can see this one from both sides. It's like yeah. th there's two if very different angles manager, to it. If you have a great manager, it's yeah. fine. But if not, if, if the manager doesn't see your work, you should speak up. Yeah, yeah. there's what, what two do, angles. What do we call that? Pla middle of the fence. Plausible. 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 Could be a career stopper. Yeah. All right. Um, next one. The lonely wolf. <gasps> we all have worked with these per persons, right? Hang on, sit we work quiet. together. <laughs> no, not with <Okay>. you. <laughs> so it's quiet there, <laughs> just like, just like. Hacking, hacking away, not talking to anyone, said, okay, this pull request is already just like merged and fixed, and just like this feature I did it, this bug fix. Don't talk to anyone, doesn't do code reviews because their code is brilliant, uh, they don't need code reviews. These people, they're just like looking at just like their own yeah. pass in the... I've, I've worked with those people, they're, they're, they're a challenge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's a team, it, this is... you. We're all part of teams, and if we want to you know, go far, then we need to work as a team, and we need to work together. And those soft skills, um, you know, the communication, the listening, uh, the compassion, that's a really important one. We're all humans. We're all fighting battles that nobody else knows anything about. So for me, that's, that's really important to have those skills. Yeah, yeah. If you work in a team, and most of us does, then yep. you need to just like work together to hand over work, to just like get a, get a better understanding what the other people is doing. So I, think I would could, say this, this is, is a real stopper. stopper. Yep. So this is confirmed. Yep. All right, so we took you on a journey, right? And even though we're now we're talking here for 50 minutes, um, it's, it's, it's your, your journey is still like a little bit like, not, not a straight career, right? It's just like going up and down and left and right. You can, you can be a product manager, you can just like be a, a staff engineer, whatever. Um, but what I just wanted to say and what you want to take away with is just make conscious decision. What is your next step? Where do you want to go? Have a clear goal, like what, what, what you want to achieve. And if your goal is to just like say, I'm at a happy place, I'm, I'm fine with right now, or just like, I just like, I have a family at home, I can't look at big career moves right now that puts me in a, in a position that I have to invest more in work, that's fine too. But just have, have decisions, make a decision about your, your, your career move or your career where you wanna, wanna go, and don't sit there and wait for promotion because hope is not a strategy. So, own your career, don't just let it happen. Thank you very much. Thank you.